Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson, and this is Real True Street Crime. Let me come at you today. I want to start by telling you all, go over and check out the tasting table. It is Jelani, a bona fide chef, straight out of Baker College, certified chef, to help give you advice on your recipes to make them taste better. If you think something missing in that particular recipe, you can call and get advice on how to make your recipes taste better. It is the tasting table, Jelani. He makes a mean fish taco with sour cream topping with cabbage on a soft taco. It is a dynamite fish taco, one of the best I have ever had. You gotta taste it and tell for yourself. Fish taco with that lime sour cream on it is the bomb. He makes a bomb ice cream with the goat cheese, with the goat, whatever he said, goat something and the uh, heavy cream and cherries. Man, it was mean, homemade ice cream with heavy cream. He makes a mean steak. So go over to Tasting Table and check out Jelani. It's real good cooking and you can get some advice on how to make your food real good and taste better. But let me go into today's story about Wonderful Wayne here on Real True Street Crime. Let me tell you this about Wonderful Wayne. He was had Taurus Production, which had Prince in Town, one of the first people to ever bring Prince in Town under Taurus Production, Wonderful Wayne. Understand this, Wonderful Wayne was the other half of the young boys. Understand that. And Wonderful Wayne, understand this, was getting money while Bush Jones was still in jail. When Bush Jones came out of jail, Wonderful Wayne was living out on the street in Southfield named George Washington. Had a swimming pool and everything and used to take the crew out there to party at the house and unwind and relax after a day of work. So understand this, he took Butch Jones out there to the house and the pool and all of that, and Butch got jealous. He offered Butch Jones work. Butch didn't want it. He was jealous of him. It should have been assigned to W.W. Wonderful Wayne. Then, when he took him out there and offered him action, showed him his house, how he was living, Butch got jealous. And that started the jealousy which led to them killing Wonderful Wayne. A brother who didn't bought Prince in town had a wonderful tourist production. But let me also tell you all this. Wonderful Wayne was the first nigga on the west side who sold $5 blows. You understand? And Butch then was wondering, how do this nigga keep up with me selling $5 blows? I'm selling $10 blows. But know this. That $5 blow that Wayne was selling here, he was selling in Boston for $40 a blow. And Pep and Brentnam was in Boston taking care of that business. So wonderful Wayne always ran Boston. And that's what made him so strong. It wasn't the $5 blow in Detroit. It was the $40 blow in Boston that made wonderful Wayne so wonderful. That's how he bought all of his crew new whips. Butch bought them all old used whips. Wayne, all of his crew. Tony Ball had the new black two-seater Jag. Brett had the brand new 380 four-door Mercedes. WW was riding the 928 Porsche. All the crew had new expensive cars. Butch, one or two of his crew, like Maurice Bell, had the new drop top bins for Butch and them. But all the WW's crew. And Butch got jealous of that. How this nigga buying all his crew, these expensive cars, and Thines and all them niggas got bins that they windows had to crank the goddamn window down and they'd they be like the fat man he got stuck in that motherfucker trying to crank a window down. You understand? So this is the kind of action they was getting and they was watching Brett and all them niggas riding new Benzes and new whips. So this is how WW was and it only increased the jealousy of Butch. 
Because I, for the life of me, I kept trying to find what was the beef about. And everybody who spoke on it said jealousy. They could find nothing else. WW didn't only no money, nothing. It was nothing else that fueled this but jealousy. This is what I try to tell you all out there about jealousy, how powerful it is. It cost wonderful Wayne his life. Wayne is over there on Lawton and Hogarth on a phone booth, on a pay phone, and that's where they're killing that, talking to his wife, Dorothy. Can you imagine the pain she has to carry listening to that shot in her mind forever? I feel sorry for that woman. Know that. Any man would feel sorry for a woman who had to hear her last conversation with her husband in her mind forever, and it ends with a boom, a loud gunshot and he's dead. I have feelings for that. And my condolence will always go out to wonderful Wayne and his family coming down like that because it's a hell of a way to come down. And after the killing, Brett, Pep, all of them was in Boston. So none of them made the funeral because they were sort of scared of Butch and them shooting the funeral up and Pep was already beefing with Butch. So Pep was in Boston hustling, getting money when W.W. was buried. Pep and Brett was in Boston. Neither one of them made the funeral because they all thought they didn't want to go to get it shot up and have his funeral in that way because he was not that type of guy. He got killed like that, okay? He was in the game, but still after a man is dead, it's over. You won't hear me talk about a motherfucker after it's dead and a beat. That's the end. That's the respect of the game. Usually a rule when guys go to jail is that when you go to jail, the beef is over until you all get out. Niggas generally don't go, and he was trying to tell Maurice Bell that my father about Butch and them when they wanted to get Pep in jail. He was explaining to Mo, Mo, that's not how it's done in here. We all doing hard times. And generally, unless a nigga is a snitch, that's the only way you really get it. They usually let the beef go till they both leave out of jail because they're doing the worst time of their life. Why you want to be beefing with a nigga in jail? You've been beefing on the street. Now, you the only two niggas from Detroit, and y'all beefing? You might be in another state. Once you doing fair time, you only come in the Milan to be classified, then they send you out all across the country. Now you and a nigga who beefing meet up, y'all gonna be beefing there? Or y'all gonna be like, damn, we the only two Detroit niggas, everybody else might wanna beef with us, so we better link up and leave that shit alone, and if we gonna kill each other after we get out, we'll kill each other. But generally, beefs end when they go to jail. You don't beef there. You pick it back up when you leave out, if you're lucky enough to live and leave out of there and you might learn some knowledge in jail where you say you don't want to ever beef again. The beef is over. You understand? After you do 20 years in jail, you might walk out bald-headed any kind of way. Jail is stressful in many ways to everybody in a different way. Understand that. So the stress you have of trying to get out of jail might take the fight you had out of wanting to stick him. Because you fighting the government for your freedom. Understand that. And it usually ends when you go to jail. And as I said, they couldn't even go to WW's funeral for fear that it was going to be shot up because of them. You know, this day might come and shoot the front of They didn't want that. His mama and family there. So they didn't go. Let family go. A few hustlers went, but mostly they didn't. So I'm just explaining to you how it was. Wonderful Wayne was the first brother to be wonderful and bring towards production and prints all the wonderful things he did. Don't forget them. That's why I tell y'all, when y'all got pictures of Scarface hanging on your wall, these are imaginary characters. Scarface was an imaginary character from the movies, and we put him on our wall like he a real person. Eddie Jackson was a real person. Bumpy Johnson was a real person. Those are the ones 
I want to hang on my wall. Bumpy Johnson first. He was the godfather. He ran Harlem in New York, a small section. Eddie Jackson ran the whole Midwest, three or four different states. Understand that. That's the difference. But Bumpy has always been the godfather and always will be the godfather. And it will be a poster on my wall of Bumpy Johnson. It will be a poster on my wall of Eddie Jackson. And I will throw Doc Gambino on my wall because I know him and admire him and he did something for me. So Doc will be on my wall. You understand? The ones I know in like, I'm not going to use ones I didn't know in fictionary. I'll use the ones I knew. The fat man. I'll put Milwaukee Jack up on my wall. You understand? I'll put Treacherous up on my wall. I'll put Black Butch up on my wall because I admire and like what they did and I'm not worshiping what Al Capone did, what Frank Nitty did. No, I'm worshiping what Bumpy Johnson did, what Eddie Jackson did. Both of them had Malcolm X in their ear and it's historical. Eddie Jackson was a Black Panther to be with Bobby Seals, Huey P. Newton, and all the rest of them. Eddie Jackson loved Stokey Carmichael and fed off of black power with Stokey coin. Understand that. You talking history. And I want y'all to know one other thing, and I'm going to get out your ear. Aretha Franklin's father was one of the biggest pastors in the country. Only thing bigger was Martin Luther King than Aretha Franklin's daddy, Pastor C.L. Franklin. Understand that. He was truly a heavyweight, and I don't think he gets the acknowledgement for the civil rights fight he fought. People look at all the jewelry and all the glamour he had, which he did used to wear a lot of jewelry, and look fantastic. But they don't look at the fight he did for black people. We've always liked to wear a lot of gold. Look at the kings in Africa. They used to, like Mr. T, they used to wear gold like that. We, that's in our embedded, in our genes, to wear a lot of gold and jewelry if we can afford it. We have always liked that as people from Africa. Look at pictures of your African kings and look at the gold and diamonds and emeralds they're wearing. It is only embedded in you because that's where you come from. Know that. That's where you come from. The reason we love to party dance, that's where we come from. People who love to dance and do rain dances and pray to God. I lie. Understand that. So I'm not going to hold your ear any longer. Just explaining to you how wonderful Wayne was and telling you I wanted to update the mistake I made. The brother got killed on Lawton and Hogarth which is Derek Coleman's mother's neighborhood on the North End. That's the mistake I made in the story. That's, and I'm correcting it. This is real true street crime, and that's what we do. And the last thing I want to say, Milwaukee Jack is on the cover of the Whispers Christmas song, Happy Holidays. When you pull that song up on the internet, you will see a picture of Milwaukee Jack in a white captain's jacket and a white captain hat, and he will have signed his name on the picture. Milwaukee Jack, Merry Christmas, salute to you. So if you want to see Milwaukee Jack, the picture of him is on the Whispers album cover. That's how famous the game was in Detroit. This is real true street crime telling you all, go over and check Jelani out on the tasting table and go over and listen to the podcast, Crime Town, Spotify, Kingpin's Kids, and you will hear the actual federal officer. You will hear E.J., the fat man. We're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Like, subscribe, and share. And peace and love and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to all of us.